I recently had a question from one of my viewers under my video on VCR repair as to how do you line up the gears on a VCR if you happen to lose track of how everything goes. Well, I can't give you a one-size-fits-all answer, but the manufacturers do leave us quite a few clues, and I thought I'd talk about a few of them in the video here. Now, one thing I like to do before I take everything apart is to take out my marker and start marking things as carefully as I can. Even though the manufacturer leaves us a lot of little marks on the gears and whatnot, I'd rather not depend on them in case they don't. And anyway, I'm going to go through a few of the marks that they leave you here, and hopefully you'll find that helpful. Now, if you take a look at these two gears here, this is the, uh, the mode switch gear on the side here. You see it's got a little indentation there. And if you look at this other gear, it's got a little indentation as well in the shape of an arrow. These two marks have to be lined up right across from each other, but only when the VCR is in the fully eject stop mode. If you were to line these up when the VCR is in the play mode, for example, and then put it back together, it's not going to work right because this little mode switch is rotating and it's sending signals to the microprocessor or logic, logic states, I guess you could say, letting the microprocessor know what mode the VCR is in. So you can imagine what would happen if this thing wasn't lined up right. And the other gears, for example, they have um, pretty much the same thing. You'll note, if you look very carefully, there's a little arrow indentation there and another little indentation there. The other thing they do is a lot of times they put holes on the gears that align up with holes behind the gears. So here we've got a hole. It probably lines up perfectly with a hole that's on the metal chassis behind the gear. And the same with this one here. We've got a little hole right there, and I believe it lines up with what's ever behind it. So sometimes you can depend on that, but not always. Another area I've gotten into trouble is with these cam gears here. Now, if you take a look at this cam gear, you'll notice it has little indentations on the back side of it, and it interacts with this cam lever gear here. If you might note, this has little gear teeth on it, and it causes some of these gears here to rotate when this thing moves back and forth. And this gets its movement from this cam gear that rotates. So this cam gear has little levers behind it. So when this thing moves, it causes the uh, cam lever to go back and forth. So you can imagine if you didn't get that lined up correctly, the kind of problems you might run into. Anyway, just a little uh, tip there on the uh, cassette loading deck. The other area that you have to be careful about are on some of these loading carriages. Now this is a loading carriage I just pulled out of this VCR that one of my viewers sent me. And uh, this one's in good shape, fortunately, but a lot of times in the old days, the customers would force a tape into the machine and they'd end up breaking a little cam gear on this or one of these gears. And you had to make sure you line them all up correctly as well. So you wanna make sure you take these things apart very carefully, take your marking pen out, mark as many surfaces as you can. And another thing that you wanna take note of is that when you put it all back together, here, for example, we've got this little lever that goes up and down and it moves when you push your eject button and it interacts with this little lever on the side of this door here to let the door open to eject your videotape. And a lot of times I put these things together too quickly and didn't take the time to line these up. And when I push the eject button, you'd hear the machine try to eject the tape and the tape wasn't able to come out. Now the uh, gentleman that sent in this VCR for repair, he complained that the VCR ate tapes. So the first thing I did was I took out the mode switch I cleaned it up as I showed in one of my other videos and uh, put it all back together, put a little dielectric tune-up grease inside of it. And the other complaint that he had was that the tape counter wasn't working correctly. Now the tape counter on these machines gets its signal from an infrared sensor and an infrared emitter. And on this particular model, it looks like we've got a couple of them here. So one of these is an infrared LED and the other one's a pickup sensor. And the way it works is when the VCR is in the run position, you've got this beam shooting upward like this, shooting up into a port on the cassette deck that's got a, uh, like this port, port right here. It's got like a little chrome reflective surface there and part of it's painted black. So as it rotates, the infrared light's hitting the chrome reflective surface. It's being reflected back down at the infrared sensor that's being ejected or protruded, how do I say it, emitted upward and then being reflected back down and picked up by the sensor. And that tells the counter what part of the tape you're in. Now this particular VCR has two of the same uh, ports like that. You've got one on 
this side here that you can see turn, and you've got one on the other side. And I'm just turning the spindle that normally gives the uh, tape its movement. I'm turning the spindle on the back side of the VCR here. Oops. Anyway, I was just turning, turning the spindle right here to uh, be able to see the back side of the chrome reflective surface. Anyway, for what it's worth, I just thought I'd make a few tips on the, the uh, VCR repair here. Um, still get a few of these coming in, believe it or not. You'd think they'd be obsolete by now, but a lot of people have these old tapes and uh, they want to copy them onto DVD or whatever. So they need one functional VCR to be able to do that unless they have a combo unit. Anyway, for what it's worth, I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.